Hello, today I'm going to talk about Wikidata as a tool to connect researchers. This uh, work is uh, the result of a collaboration with Jorrit Poulin. Um, we're both with the Ronin Institute and we're presenting today at the Lightning Talks at Ronin Institute. A copy of the slides as well as of the video is available under this Zenodo um, DOI. Let's dive in. So the structure of the talk is we will look at how communities can come together via social and technical mechanisms. We will ex uh, explore how um, existing collaborations can be first detected and then used. And, and then we can also look at uh, potential new collaborations. Um, we have uh, based this talk on a presentation we've given to another community, the Open Trades Network. But we want to also highlight the opportunities for the Ronin community to uh, take a similar approach. And then, of course, we hope for a discussion and uh, some um, considerations of what might come next. So here are the networks we are going to consider, or the components uh, that we want to look at, um, are three. One is the Open Trade Network, which is a community of people who are uh, doing research uh, around traits uh, in biology. So traits are basically characteristics of um, a specific population uh, or yeah, uh, species. Um, and um, yeah, these traits, they might manifest itself in various ways. They could be morphological traits, they could be behavioral traits. Uh, they um, largely have uh, some genetic component to them and uh, yeah they can be like the biomass uh, of a tree or they can be uh, the number of hairs at the tarsus of a fly all sorts of things and uh, people who are studying traits they try to make this systematic and um, the open trade network in particular tries to share resources and methods and uh, yeah other um, elements of the research cycle so that research about traits becomes uh, essentially better uh, and more of a community approach. The second component of the network we're going to consider is Wikidata, which is a sister project to our Wikipedia, and you can think of it essentially as a database that anyone can edit. It has uh, general reference information on about 100 million topics and uh, is multilingual, is uh, completely in the public domain and uh, some of the information that it contains is also relevant uh, for the open trade network so it has information about uh, species it has information about people it has information about uh, publications about events and institutions and other things that are relevant to research in the open trade um, space scolia the third component is a tool that can visualize uh, data from Wikidata and uh, it particularly is designed for visualizing scholarly aspects of Wikidata. So while Wikidata um, has information on all sorts of things including scholarly but not limited scho uh, to scholarly information, Scolia specifically zooms in on scholarly publications, on uh, research institutions, researchers and um, things that are of interest to researchers. Um, yeah, and now we want to see how we can uh, uh, bring all of these together. For each of them, we've listed here a foundational article, and uh, yeah, you can explore these on your own. So, the Open Trace Network is a global, decentralized community of researchers and institutions that welcomes anyone working towards standardizing and integrating trade data across all organisms. Scolia is a service that creates visual scholarly profiles for topics, people, organizations, species, chemicals, etc. using bibliographic and other information in Wikidata. And Wikidata is a free and open knowledge base that can be read and edited by both humans and machines. Okay, so uh, there are several ways to organize communities. One could be like decentralized and disconnected, um, which is how most research groups kind of uh, interact uh, in a certain field, then uh, they can be centralized and connected, uh, which is how individual 
uh, research institutions typically uh, are organized. And then the, uh, you can have uh, mixed models where you're decentralized, but also strongly connected. And that is what the Open Trades Network is trying to achieve. There's a figure of it, uh, but since the figure is not openly licensed, we didn't include it here uh, because we wanted to make the presentation open. So um, the um, open space has multiple shades of openness. And so here we uh, have a visualization of the elements that are based on a UNESCO presentation from last year, um, which highlights certain aspects of um, open science. So it's infrastructures, it's educational resources, it's openness to diversity of knowledge, um, it's op open access publication, open data, open source software, open hardware, open engagement of social actors, and so on. There are a number of other things that you could add, like for instance, open notebook signs and, uh, and yeah, other things, citizen signs, um, but yeah, that, that should give you um, a rough idea. And uh, with that in mind, you should then think about, okay, traits. How can you um, think about open source software relevant to traits, open uh, science infrastructure relevant to traits, open educational resources relevant to traits, and so on. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, now we're looking back at those uh, three components and uh, they are somewhat interconnected in various ways and open science is one uh, of those uh, ways so um, people from wikidata for instance can observe what happens on the open trade network uh, people in the open trade network can observe uh, what happens on wikidata and they can also contribute uh, to the uh, yeah to both uh, places likewise uh, people on the open trade network can uh, look into scolia and see how it visualizes the information from wikidata and people working on Scolia profiles, they can look at uh, what the Open Trade Network people are doing. Um, then these these were kind of conceptual, um, like basics. Now we're looking at how do we practically implement this? Um, this is largely the work of Jorod here. Um, so uh, there's, the Open Trade Network has a, has a website. This is implemented on GitHub Pages, and uh, that website uh, is uh, being is static. It feeds off of static data, and uh, we have basically built a small pipeline that can pull some data from Wikidata, which is uh, essentially dynamic, um, and uh, saves a snapshot of that data in a format that uh, the Open Trades Network website can process. And then that data is being visualized as part of the Open Trades Network um, website. Um, and some of the visualizations are inspired directly from Scolia. Some of them uh, are a bit uh, further uh, removed from Scolia. Um, an example here is, uh, so the interactions between people and uh, taxa, so the, the, the species or other biological groupings that they've worked with. So here for a number of um, wiki data entries, uh, we are now listing their a label, essentially the name of, of the person and uh, they're all um, Open Thread Network members. And then like the species or other um, biological entities they've worked with according to the publications indexed in Wikidata. Yeah, we can then also look at um, like collaboration networks. So uh, here we see a map between um, individual members of the Open Trace Network and the publication. And uh, there is a link if they have been co-author on the same publication. And there is a, um, an image if there, there is an image of them in Wikimedia Commons. And uh, this is a live graph. And so you can dive in, you can explore that, you can zoom in and out, you can move them around uh, to see who's connected to whom. And uh, yeah, you can uh, consider what works uh, did they co-author and uh, who published with whom and who may perhaps review someone else's uh, network or who might be a mentor for someone or who might be teaching a method to someone else, things like that. Uh, potential 
uh, collaborations of the kind that I've just uh, alluded to. They come out, for instance, on the basis of a map that highlights um, the topics that people have worked on. Uh, so here we have again uh, members uh, of the network and so here for instance and uh, then they're connected uh, this time not via papers but by, via the topics of papers and uh, here we've zoomed in specifically on the part of the network that shows uh, topics related to invasion biology and uh, so even though the um, Open Traits Network is not specific to invasion biology. There are some traits of uh, species that basically um, predispose them uh, to uh, being a successful in invader or to uh, being uh, like the, the victim of some successful invader. Um, and so there are a number of interactions between invasion biology and uh, trait research. And some of these interactions are visible in visualizations like this. And uh, yeah, if you're already working or somehow interested in um, one of those areas here, uh, and uh, you know that uh, uh, some of the other elements of uh, this network might be of interest to you as well, or uh, you just read an uh, exciting paper that uh, says, okay, uh, um, or that, that you interpret that you should probably look into this new um, topic or method, then you can see who in the network has already worked with this. And so maybe you can approach them and then do something together along those lines. Yeah, um, so we have um, specifically looked at a number of uh, such potential collaborations. So uh, we have a mapping between member and the taxa they have uh, worked on. Uh, and there is a sample query for Hymenoptera or angiosperms. Um, we have uh, a similar visualization for the methods. So for instance, you can um, ask questions like which members of the network have published papers that use ArcGIS or ImageJ uh, to basically image processing packages that are used in different contexts uh, or who have used other specific resources in their research. Or you can uh, start by a specific type of trait that you're interested in, say morphological trait or uh, behavioral trait, uh, or yeah, something like hairiness. And then you can see everybody in the network who has published about this. Here, it's important to know that the data and Wikidata about this is likely uh, to always be incomplete. Um, but um, yeah, if it's incomplete, you can make it more complete in a certain area that you care about. And uh, also, uh, if it's wrong, you can go and fix it. Yeah, so um, what are the kinds of collaborations uh, that uh, we have uh, basically mechanisms for exploring? So um, we can say uh, that uh, the organization has a member, uh, that's the person. Um, the organization um, organized an event, the person attended an event, um, then the person is like indirectly uh, linked to taxa via data or publications. The person's also, at least from the data that we have, indirectly related to the method um, because they're an author of some data or publication and the uh, uh, data or publication essentially then cites a method. Um, and uh, the researchers are also um, somewhat indirectly related to, to the traits again uh, via the publications yeah and um, researchers are also or open trade network members are also connected to each other by way of collaborations which have resulted in data or publications or maybe software or other resources yeah um, now in the process of building this workflow that reuses the data from wikidata in the context of the open trade network uh, we have uh, had to deal with a number of questions, some of which are outlined here. So for instance, is it okay to add information to someone else's profile? Uh, on GitHub pages, anyone who knows how uh, GitHub operates, you can propose changes. And uh, if you have admin rights on the repo, which a number of people in the network have, then they can actually uh, effectuate those changes. And so to what extent is it okay? for someone to add information to someone else's uh, profile. 
uh, then um, does that make a difference as to whether uh, it's the profile of the open trade network itself which sits on github or uh, whether uh, that is with your data and do we have different feelings different attitudes to someone coming in and changes this kind of, uh, of information um, and then also um, what might be the benefits or the pitfalls of uh, someone else editing your um, profile on either of these two places and uh, then uh, also all these networks that you know we've shown or these uh, ways of interaction between the people and uh, the, their environment they kind of reveal uh, a number of um, pieces of information about the researchers and uh, so there are questions as to do do we want uh, to reveal this does any individual in the network have to want to reveal this information or to what extent um, can some of this be kept private to what extent uh, does uh, the openness of that kind of information actually affect certain functions of the network these things ca can all be discussed and i think we can discuss them also from the perspective of ronin because um, while uh, the open trade network uh, has a rather uh, specific focus on a specific subject uh, the ronin network is more loose because it covers many more subjects um, and uh, so the potential for interaction between people is perhaps reduced because the overlap of the research uh, is less but still there will be overlap and uh, especially if we are all from very different fields it might be uh, more challenging to actually find out what the overlap is because we don't necessarily go to the same conferences we don't necessarily publish in the same journals even if we might use the same method we don't necessarily know about this um, and these kinds of connections they can be revealed uh, via workflows of the kind that we're outlining here and so uh, yeah we would like to uh, enter this into a discussion we hope on uh, getting feedback on this from the Ronin network and also from others who are interested in networks of researchers yeah and so we would like to acknowledge uh, funding for attending the workshop at which we originally presented uh, this work then uh, the Alfred Sloan Foundation for supporting work on Scolia and the Volkswagen Stiftung for supporting work on integrating invasion biology into Wikidata. So this is where the presentation uh, is supposed to stop. Uh, but we have a few bonus slides that I will uh, briefly outline. Um, so uh, we can, for instance, um, yeah, explore more collaborations so we've had already the taxa the methods and uh, some other things so for instance uh, we can look at events which events have been attended by uh, members of the network and uh, yeah you can think of some other parameters uh, like which chemicals have people worked with or which uh, natural history collection or so um, then uh, you can consider oh uh, have, have you actually met some of the people in the network already or um, the uh, it can be possible to trace back from events attended to um, co-published research um, like when was the first uh, event that is public where the two researchers have interacted and uh, then also uh, when we look at this from a network perspective we can of course look at um, how can a network an organization like the Ronin or the Open Trades Network facilitate the kind of uh, interactions that lead to the outcomes that uh, they want to foster. And uh, conversely, um, if there are certain kinds of interactions that are not very productive, then how can we reduce them or make them more productive? Yeah. Um, then um, another aspect is uh, the visualizations can also um, highlight certain gaps in the knowledge or in the activities of the network. Um, or in the vicinity of a particular kind of activity. So for instance, invasion biology has a number of neighboring fields like urban ecology, restoration ecology. Um, and uh, we can visualize this. Uh, so the information that is in Wikidata or uh, slash Scolia about these topics in general versus uh, via a filter um, that applies um, knowledge about the open trade network. And so we can then also look at urban traits. Yeah. Um, yeah, a demo we would like to do, 
um, is uh, about uh, Scolia. So we did that in the workshop. Um, and uh, so I, w I <laughs> am still uh, considering whether I should actually do this. Let's see how things go. Uh, but basically, I, I could show a number of um, visualizations that are based on data and that uh, are done by Scolia. And uh, yeah, then other aspects that we actually worked on in the workshop for Open Trades, uh, you can basically bring your own links. So you can think about the kind of links that you have with certain elements of the research ecosystem, be that institutions or um, research objects or taxa or methods or publications or data sets, software, other researchers, things like that, events. And uh, then we can have a look at how we can model this. Uh, how would you represent this kind of information in Wikidata or in the Open Trade Network or on the Ronin website? Uh, then how can we make this kind of information reusable, more easily harvestable? Uh, like for instance, the Ronin website right now um, does not make it easy to um, reuse the information that contain that's contained in there. Um, and uh, Wikidata does make it relatively easy so that Open Trade Network can incorporate this kind of information directly in the Open Trade Network's website. Um, yeah, we can also think about uh, new ways of exploring our own links within the network and maybe beyond the existing networks. Um, so um, yeah, we can look at um, our own collaborations or maybe some collaborations of some other person that we're interested in. Uh, or we can center the network around an institution or some other element of a research cycle. Okay, so that was the official part of the presentation.